Today, we will look into how to write a technical user story. Generally, when you go for a business analyst or a scrum master interview, one of the questions that almost always comes up is how to write a user story, how to write a technical user story or a functional user story. In that case, they, you will be asked to share your screen and write the technical user story in a notepad. So when you're asked to do that, you have to be trained and you have to give them a good technical user story if they ask you to come up with one. I have written this technical user story with reference to a feature in Amazon so that you can understand better. So I'm going to show you this feature in Amazon, explain the feature, explain how this amazon.com feature works first. And then with reference to this, I'm going to document the technical user story. That way you can understand better. So please do watch the feature explanation and then the technical user story, the way it's documented. So please do watch till the end. If you have any questions or comments, please do post below and please do like my video and hit the subscribe button if you like the content. So let's look into the feature for which we are going to come up with the technical user story. And please keep in mind that generally we write the technical user story first and then we code and then the feature is built. But here we are reverse engineering it. We are looking into an already built feature and then we are writing the technical user story for understanding purpose so that you can understand uh, the technical user story better having said that let's look at the feature let me explain the feature for which i'm going to write a technical user story so if you go to amazon you will find a tab named customer service if you go into customer service you will find a button named find a missing package that shows as delivered if you click on it you are going to see a lot of info. You are going to see this video where it's going to show step-by-step -step instructions on what to do in the case where you order an iPhone or you order any package from Amazon and then it's delivered or it's not delivered, but then in your phone, it says the package has delivered. When you go out and see, you don't see the package. When you go check your mailbox, you don't see the package, but your application, but your Amazon application shows it's delivered. So this video that you see in here tells us what are the next steps that we need to take in the case where the package wasn't delivered, but then the application shows that the package is delivered. So what are the next steps to take? So this video tell, gives us a step-by-step -step on that. And we see that video in here. And then there is the career con carrier contact information button where all the names of the carriers are mentioned. You can call them and you can figure out uh, whether is there any issues or something. Is there something that you can do in your end or they can do in their end? So once we go through this, there is another button below. Uh, there is another button below. Um, if we go to the previous page, this is the previous page. There, uh, so there is this video. There is that this carrier contact information where you saw all the contact details. And finally, there is some info on what to do next here as display text too. Finally, there is a feature here. Was this information helpful? You can either click yes or you can click no. If you click yes, it's just going to capture that data. But if you click no, there is one more step. You should pick, you should select, please select what best describes the information. Either you need to select this information is confusing or wrong, or this isn't the information that I was looking for, or I don't like this policy. So you can just select one and hit submit. This is the feature, right? So now we are going to write, a, now we are going to come up with a hypothetical scenario which is, now this is the Amazon application. We all know this. Let's come up with a hypothetical scenario in our mind. So this data that we just saw, this set of data, so that gets transferred from the Amazon.com's database to another application, to another database within uh, 
in Amazon to another database in Amazon. And we are calling it a, a customer service database that they have. So this is driving another application that belongs to Amazon, but it's not the Amazon.com that we use all the time. So that data, meaning this data that we, this, this, the information that we enter in here gets, once we enter it and hit submit, like we did, goes from Amazon.com's database, which is this, to the customer service database, which is another database that Amazon owns that is separate from the database that's driving this application. Okay. So that is the hypothetical scenario that we are coming up to explain this uh, for this technical user story. And these are the payload info. Helpful YRN. So what is this helpful? Yes or no? That's nothing but in the case where we hit yes or um, that's nothing but whether we are going to select yes or no. Right. So that is the first data point. Second is once we select no, it gives three more options. So first one is confusing or wrong. So the data point is named wrong. The second one that you see here is this isn't the information that I was looking for. So the column name is not looking or the data point name is not looking. Third one is I don't like the policy. So they don't like policy. That's the third data point name. So all these data points are going to be inside a payload. And this data, once we enter it, once we enter it in here, once we enter it in here, S yes, no, and then if it is no, then, you know, and if we hit submit, right? So once we do this, this data goes from, so that's this data. Okay. I think you understand that much. Now this data gets transferred from Amazon's database to the customer service database through an API. So this segment gets transferred from, so this set of data gets transferred from, that's what is called payload. The set of data is called payload that gets transferred from Amazon's database to customer service database through API. Mm -hmm. So you can think of API as a set of code that's going to transfer data from one application to another application on a real time basis. Also, it can do it not on a real time basis or on real time basis. In this case, it's doing it on a real time basis, meaning once we hit the submit button, this data will go to Amazon uh, API. Uh, this go this data will go to the customer service database on a real time manner, meaning immediately that data will go. So this is something that we are making up to come up with our user story. So that's why we have this API in place. So long, so just to summarize, once we enter all the data, so this payload is sent to the customer service database from the Amazon database through the API. So I think we are clear up to this. We are all on the same page. If you have any questions, comment below. Um, I'll respond by the end of the day or maybe I'll take a day or two to give a response. Now. Let's come up with a technical user story for this. So the skeletal structure of a technical user story is as a system, I want to show that. So as a system, I want to send the user feedback data to the Amazon customer service application. Once the user enters the information so that the Amazon customer service application can store and utilize the data. So this is the technical user story for that. And it uses the skeletal structure. So as a system, since it's a technical user story, we only use system. There is no human intervention, meaning, meaning there is human intervention in terms of entering this info. So that human intervention is there. But then when it comes to the data being sent over to the external uh, customer service application, for that, there is no human intervention. This happens in the back end automatically. So for everything that doesn't need a human intervention, meaning I'm not scrolling through anything, I'm not clicking on anything, I'm not entering any information in, right? This happens automatically. So this API transfers the data to 
the customer service database automatically for that transfer itself to happen we do not need human intervention okay this is a slightly confusing topic but uh, i hope you understand if you don't understand do comment below i'll 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 i'll, I'll articulate further so like i said for the data to go from the amazon database to the customer service database through the api so this set of data to go to get transferred there is no human intervention it happens automatically hence we are writing a technical user story and not a functional user story right so that is why we say as a system for a technical user story this is done by the system so we are going to start it as as a system and then i want to send um, the user da feedback data to the amazon customer service application once the user enters the information so that so we can enter it in here and then uh, the amazon customer service application can store and utilize data so that is the business purpose of doing this so why are we transferring this info so why are we transferring this info from amazon database to customer service database we are transferring it because the customer service application can store and utilize the data maybe they are doing some uh, reports they are trying to understand the customer behavior they could do so many things so that's the business purpose store and utilize the data so yeah so so that so that the business purpose is covered in so that why are we doing this the business purpose is covered in uh, whatever comes after so that i want to what is it that we are doing since it's a technical user story it has to start with as a system so as a system i want to send the user feedback data to the amazon customer service application once the user enters the information so that amazon customer service application can store and utilize the data so this is a good example of a technical user story let's go into the acceptance criteria the information is confusing or wrong must be sent with yrn indicator it's talking about this if it if the radio button is selected the indicator y will be there if it is not selected the indicator n will be there in the payload this isn't what i am looking for must be sent with yrn same signs i don't like the policy must be sent with an yrn indicator so in this case if this is if they have selected option number 1 this is going to look like this so this information is confusing or wrong so this will be y and it is it helpful or not will be n because only if we click on n no then the other options will show up and we did not select not uh, this information is what isn't what i'm looking for i don't like that policy i don't like this policy we didn't select this right so this is how this if the user has selected it like this then the payload will look like this and this payload gets sent through the api to the customer service database was this information helpful must be sent with yrn indicator right so this is what the acceptance criteria is talking about so and wasn't i mean this this final acceptance criteria was, what is it was this information helpful that's nothing but this right so is does it making sense comment below if it's not if you have any questions contact me so this is the acceptance criteria uh, and this is the users technical user story and this is the back story so just to summarize this is the feature in the, the this is the feature and in, and then using this feature the user can select any one option and submit in the case where the user is going to submit the through the api the payload goes from amazon database to customer service database and the technical user story is the skeletal structure is as a system i want to so that why is it as a system because there is no human intervention the api without any human intervention the api will transfer the data from amazon database to the customer service database right as a system i want to send the user feedback data to the amazon customer service application once the user enters the information so that amazon customer service application can store and 
utilize the data that is the uh, technical user study with the skeletal structure as a system i want to show that um now acceptance criteria the information is confusing or wrong must be sent with y or n indicator this isn't what i'm looking for must be sent with the y or n indicator i don't like the policy must be sent with the y or n indicator was this in uh, information helpful must be sent with the y or n indicator so in this case if this is what the user is selecting this is how the payload will look right if this is how the if this option is selected by the end user this is how the payload will look and it goes from amazon to customer service database through the api so one thing that you can notice there is no system language in here do you see any system language in this user story api database you don't see anything right you don't see any system language like database api web service you don't see any system language or any user interface language any design language radio button we saw all these radio button right but you don't see any radio button no there's no design or system language in here that's how you have to document user stories and acceptance criteria it should not have any systems or design language that is for the systems document thanks for watching this video please do hit the subscribe button if you like the content and if you have any critical comments or a positive comment please do comment below and hit the like button and always remember it's a honor to make content for you thank you